Hello, welcome to the Getting Started with SharePoint Framework tutorial series. And this tutorial will have a look on how to provision SharePoint assets from your SharePoint client side web port. And this is the December 2017 edition. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is that we're going to create a new web port and then we kind of create the dependent lists and uh, columns um, as part of the web part solution package. So whenever the solution package or web part is getting deployed to the site, we'll create the list which the solution is dependent. And the key point of doing this and why would we do this rather than writing a JavaScript code which would actually create the list is that when you're installing a solution to the SharePoint site, you, that operation is getting executed or getting executed, the, the code is getting executed in the elevated manner. So if you would actually implement the code which is creating the SharePoint list for your web part, it might be that that code is being executed with not sufficient permissions. So it might be executed by a person who's capable of editing the site but doesn't have permissions to create new lists on the site. And that's what that's in that case, your code would actually fail. By using the feature framework inside of the SharePoint Framework Solution packages, you can guarantee that the lists and libraries or whatever your solution or web part is being dependent are getting executed and created whenever the solution is getting installed to the site. But let's actually start by creating our solution structure. So let's actually create uh, a folder uh, called asset uh, deployment uh, web part which we're going to use then as our solution structure. And we can then create a web part uh, solution. Technically, uh, in, this, uh, in this tutorial, we're not going to concentrate on the actual web part implementation. We're going to create the web part, uh, and then we're going to concentrate on the feature XML definitions inside of the solution. How do we package those XMLs in the solution? But let's use the default name for assets deployment. Uh, this is targeted for SharePoint Online. Let's use to the current folder. Um, we want to say no uh, for the tenant-wide option, installation option, because we want this solution explicitly to be installed on a site level. We are creating a web part. Uh, we want to call this uh, asset uh, deployment uh, web part. So it's we're differentiating that from the existing other web parts from the site. Asset deployment description is absolutely fine description or Let's do asset uh, deployment uh, web part as the, as the web part uh, description. And we're going to use the no JavaScript framework option in here. And again, the scaffolding starts. This will take a while uh, to actually get a solution created. Um, so let's speed up the video so we can concentrate on the more essential things uh, when the, the scaffolding has been completed. And there we go, now the scaffolding has been completed and we're able to start our Visual Studio Code solution. So let's quickly modify the solution to have a placeholders and locations uh, for our existing code uh, or for our feature framework element file. So let's first create here a SharePoint folder and this folder would be actually created automatically whenever you would do your initial bundlings because that's where, or packaging, whenever the solution package is getting created. So that's going to create a subfolder underneath the SharePoint folder. But if we want to have element XML files included in the solution, we need to uh, place them in the assets folder underneath the SharePoint folder. And in here, we can actually create a new file called element XML elements uh, XML. If you're familiar with SharePoint framework from the previous versions of SharePoint, you might be familiar on, on what this actually means. Um, but in here, uh, we will then have uh, the definitions of the needed fields and lists and, and uh, for example, content types, uh, if we, uh, which we can use within our solution. So I'm going to actually copy the, the definitions uh, from our tutorial, written tutorial, and let's have a look on what I'll be actually doing here. So we're using the feature framework element XML schema to define that there's a field <coughs> called SPFX amount, which is a type of a currency, and we're adding some additional definitions here. There's another field, which is a type of a choice uh, with the required entry of false as well, and those are the choice fields. With fields, and those both are actually associated to a content type called cost center, 
and it is in the group of SPFX content types. And this one is essentially associating that field uh, with the field ID. As you can see, that's the field ID of the cost center, and there's the field ID of the SPFX amount. And then the last thing what we're doing here is that we are actually defining that we will provision an out of a custom list and normal list, not a document library, but we will use a custom schema uh, called schema.xml to cre create this list. So as part of provisioning time of the solution, when the solution is getting installed on a site, we'll create a list called SPFX list uh, based on this schema XML file. The schema XML file uh, is slightly, can be slightly intimidating actually, uh, but this is a default uh, schema XML structure which has been in the SharePoint for, for decades already, well, almost, well, more than a decade actually, um, which is defining how the list would actually look like. There are tools to export existing list definitions um, and get all of these elements available as well. And the content type and, and the field definitions and list instances, all of this is documented within MSDN. Now, let's actually create that schema schema xml file uh, right next to the elements xml file and then i'm going to copy the definition of the schema xml this is a super super simplistic schema xml almost as small as it can get but what we have here is that uh, we are saying that there's a schema or there's a list um, definition which will have a content type reference which is referencing the content type which we actually created in here and then we have a simplistic view which is actually will have the SPFX amount and SPFX cost center in the view as well. So by default, this view will be available within the list which is getting created. So now, how do we make sure that these things are getting processed whenever the solution package is getting uh, provisioned? That's when we need to go to package solution and we need to modify slightly the solution section in here to let SharePoint know that these things and these assets are actually available. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to extend uh, slightly uh, the definition of the solution and I'm going to copy these uh, directly uh, from the, uh, from the uh, written format. But basically what we do here is that we're introducing a feature called Asset Deployment Web Park Client Side Solution with the description of that, with the unique ID of that one. It's a version 1.0 of the feature and it has an element XML file over there and a schema XML file, which is an element file included in the feature. So basically what we're doing here is that we're telling for the Yeoman packaging that we have all of these elements or these two elements available and they should be packaged underneath a new feature, which will be then inside of the solution package. So now if we move back on our console and let's clear something, uh, clear that one slightly and do a call up bundle that's going to actually package the solution properly. So now if we then do, oh, that's going to, sorry, bundle the solution. That's going to make sure that everything is ready for, uh, for packaging of the solution. And then we're able to do call up uh, package uh, solution. And that's going to now create us the SPP KJ file. You can actually see it getting generated uh, in the solution folder in here. And there's our SPP KJ file. If everything is went fine, uh, we can extend the debug folder in the SharePoint solutions folder and inside of the folder name, we can actually see that there's an element XML file, which is a copy of the element XML file, which we actually defined in the, the, the assets folder, because all of this stuff, which is in the debug folder. So this stuff is actually inside of the SPPKG file. So this is an easy way to actually double check that your element XML file and schema XML definitions are properly being packaged on the SPPKG file. Cool. So now we need to actually, or now we want to uh, get this one deployed in our uh, solution. So let's actually open up uh, the file explorer uh, from that folder and let's actually go to a uh, app catalog in our tenant. So let's open up a tab and go to the app catalog. And then we're able to get uh, this solution deployed. So let's track and drop the solution to the app catalog. There's the trust uh, icon or trust uh, prompt. Uh, and in this case, we absolutely want to trust the, the solution because we want to test the deployment in the site level.
So now we need to decide where we want to test this. So what would be the site where we want to install the solution be available and test out that everything is working properly. We can use, for example, the group site, uh, which is or we could use a group site or a classic theme site. It really doesn't matter because the basic structure is exactly the same. So now if we go to the site contents and uh, we choose add an app or a new app, getting added. We can see that we have the asset deployment web part available underneath the apps you can add uh, selection. Or you could always uh, filter that down uh, so you can only see that app to be available within the selection. So let's get that one installed. And now that's getting installed on a site and as part of this installation it actually activates uh, those additional settings. Please note that we did have another uh, add-in available here, so that wasn't actually the one which we installed. So if I refresh uh, the site, uh, the installation is still ongoing. The easiest way actually, by the way, to make sure uh, that uh, you're seeing everything, uh, what is getting installed, is to flip on the classic SharePoint view. So in here, I can actually see that there's our asset and deployment web part and there's the Hello World web part, which already existed on our site. But I can also see that the SPFX list was also automatically generated. So I'm gonna move into back on the modern view uh, because in the future, more and more, we will be staying uh, in the modern view. And I can see that the SPFX list is available. If I go there to that list, which was automatically provisioned based on the schema XML file, uh, we can see that we have the amount and the cost center available. And if I create a new item on this list, uh, there's the amount entry, which was number or which was currency. So that's not going to actually like if I'm writing text there. But if it's a currency thing, that's fine. And the cost center had pre-selection of a, a drop down of choices to be available. Let's call this item A and save that uh, to the list. And there we go, we have a, a custom list uh, available uh, or custom definition of a list available, uh, which was created whenever the solution was actually installed on the site. Now, in certain scenarios, it might be that you need to actually, uh, as actually start extending or upgrading this solution which has been already deployed. So what if you would have a, a scenario where your solution is evolving and you need to have a second list available wherever the new version of the solution is taken into use. And you also want to have the end users the way of upgrading the existing instance to the newer version. And you can use still the, the feature framework elements in the SharePoint feature framework. So let's actually do that. So let me go back in here, let me go back in the assets folder, let me create a new item in the assets folder called elements, elements v2.xml. So this is our version 2 definition. And in the version 2 definition we can absolutely add, let's say, columns or fields and content types or whatever other, other elements, but in this case, just to demonstrate the functionality, we're adding a new custom list. Um, new list provision from a V2 as the description. Now, we also need to make sure that we, we include the actual feature upgrade definition. And the feature upgrade definition actually means that how do we define or how, what happens when we are upgrading from a previous version to another version. So, let's actually create another file here which is saying that we have oop, let's actually create the file and call that as an upgrade upgrade actions v2.xml and this one is basically defining whenever there's an upgrade operation happening what will happen and in this case what will happen is that we are referencing the feature xml uh, ID based folder. So if we go back in here, that's the same folder name as in there and the element v2 should be activated. So basically what we're saying is that whenever somebody upgrades the latest version of the solution based on the, the version what is in the app catalog, we should go and apply the element v2 XML which is the element v2 xml in here which is essentially explaining that has sharepoint that hey i want to have a new list available whenever the upgrading is happening so now we need to make sure that these two new files are getting packaged properly using uh, the package solution as well 
So let's actually update this packet solution accordingly. So we want to make sure that we have the elements v2 action available, but then we need to actually add here an upgrade action definition. And so we need to use an upgrade action, an upgrade action v2 uh, XML in here. So that's going to make sure that whenever there's an upgrade or upgrade is happening, we need to uh, apply whatever is defining this XML. And because we want to make sure that there's an upgrade happening, we're actually going to increase the version of the feature and also of the, of the solution. So there's a clear indication that this is a second version, a newer version of the package, and we should be uh, doing the upgrade operation. Good. Moving back on the console, I'm going to do uh, some cleaning here first. So let's do gulp bundle. So getting uh, stuff again ready and ready to be packaged. And let's actually do call up, uh, package solution. Technically, in this case, because we're only doing modifications in the element XML file, uh, that call bundle call is not actually needed, but call package solution would be the one which is creating the new version of the solution available. And there we go. If we want to double check again <clears throat> what was actually getting packaged, uh, we can quickly have a look on things. Uh, we can quickly have a look on, on the definitions and versions of the packages. So for example, now we can see that in the app manifest, we are using the version 2.0. And we want to have that new version then available and deployed to the app catalog. So let's actually go to the app catalog. There's the app catalog, there's the previous version. And so let's track and drop the version 2.0 in. There we go. There is already a version available. We want to replace that. And we can actually see that the app version is getting now updated to 2.0. Well, we need to first confirm that it's fine actually getting deployed. And now we can see that the app version in the app catalog is 2.0. A super well that's now telling the version which is available in the tenant app catalog but it did not update the solution automatically in a site level because that doesn't happen automatically so now let's go to the site where we installed this so let's go to the site content and let's go to that uh, solution where if the solution do reasons or another is not visible in the contents you can always go to the classic sharepoint view and you can actually see the solution available in here and i can go and say uh, details so I can actually see the details of the solution and in here because we are running the version 1.0 excuse me not details in this case in the case of about in this case so because we are running 1.0 version in this solution we actually can see uh, that there is a two a second version a newer version available in the app catalog which is a version 2.0, which was released in the December 2015. Now, if I click get it, it's going to actually do explicit upgrade operation for this solution in this site collection. And using you can absolutely do this uh, using application ALM APIs as well, which were released in the November uh, in the November 2017. So you're able to automate this upgrade operation as well. Now, if we refresh the page. The upgrade is still ongoing. We are updating the app. Still updating the app. This is a, well, how would I put it? It's instant timer-based uh, approach. So it's going to start a timer page, a timer, timer job-based execution instantly. So the, uh, getting the execution upgrade to happen will take a while. But as I'm refreshing this, you probably already noticed the new list was actually already created. So it's still doing the final uh, configurations and final closer of the upgrade, but you can see that the new list which were defined in the element XML file, if you go back in here, element XML file v2, that was a list called new list with a description of new list provisioned from a v2. New list and new list provisioned from a v2 as the description. So we can already see that the v2 uh, upgrade definitions have been properly applied. And there we go, upgrade has happened. If I extend this one, you can say that right now in this site, we are actually hosting the version 2.0, which is matching on what is being available in app catalog as well. And that's it. Slightly complicated, maybe, if you're not super familiar with a SharePoint framework, uh, a SharePoint feature framework elements, uh, but this gives you the opportunity of, of provisioning stuff 
even though the end user would not have the admin permissions or the needed owner permissions in the site level. So using the feature framework elements and, and getting those, those included in the solution packages. But that's it for this tutorial. Uh, so thanks for watching. <music>